I jam the channel that laughs in the face of obsolescence. My name is Dirk and what have I told you? There was a way that you could see the photos you were taking in an instant. No, I'm not talking about digital. I'm talking about the granddaddy of instant photos itself, the Polaroid. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Polaroid One Step SX70. Polaroid, the perfect camera for the rich, the arty, the beautiful, and the naughty. This is the first Polaroid camera that I ever owned, and it's something I bought on a whim about three years ago. It sat lonely in a cupboard of much unloved cameras, ruining the day that I would save up enough money to buy some film for it. Well, that day came. I bought this camera for about $30, but I've seen them priced for a lot more for reasons I can't quite understand. My normal shutter jam formula is to tell you about the history of the camera and maybe about the company, perhaps slip in some subtle jokes. And then I might tell you how Impossible Film brought back Polaroid film from the dead. But unfortunately, I seem to have lost that perfect formula for my show. I guess I'll have to remember how I used to do them. If only I'd written it down. Let's start in terms of looks. Well, you'll either love it or hate it. I'm not a big fan, but I think it's quite quirky looking. It has an iconic 70s look to it. It almost looks like a toy camera. The camera is completely plastic. I'm not sure how strong it is, and I don't quite dislike it enough to drop it to find out. It's probably something you can chuck into a bag and not really worry about except perhaps pushing the big red shutter button. You'll notice that mine has a little bit of customization to it. Well, the plastic label on the front was missing, so I replaced this with some industrial electrical taping just to stop the light entering. I'm not sure if that was actually required, but I thought I spent so much on film, it was best to be on the safe side. Let's start on this lens. It's a cheap plastic single element f14.6 at 105 millimeter. The equivalent 35 millimeter focal length, I believe, would be about 40 millimeter. It's a fixed focus lens, which means there's no focusing required. The manual station should be between four and six feet. That's 1.2 meters to 1.8 meters from your subject when taking a picture. By having a fixed focus lens, this keeps the camera incredibly simple and decreases the cost significantly. Unfortunately, there is temptation when using this camera to get closer to the subject. When I think Polaroid, I often think of these beautiful portraits. However, this camera probably isn't really suited towards this. This is a fixed focus lens, which means it's probably more aimed at a group or full body length picture. The camera takes the SX70 Polaroid film and you have two options available to you, either black and white or color from Impossible Film. The film is rather expensive, um, which I guess also adds to that special feeling when you're shooting with it. I bought my film with my own hard-earned money from a small intimate camera and coffee shop in Melbourne called Film Never Dies. If you're in Melbourne, Australia, go and check them out and support a small business. The biggest problem with these cameras is often the electronics. As the battery to power the camera is in the film, there's no real way to test it without loading a film in. And the film is quite expensive. Before loading the film, this is probably a good time to clean the rollers. Now, simply open the front by pressing in the small clip on the side. The camera will open, exposing the rollers the film will get pressed through the rollers so any gunk or residue will deposit on the image. The manual recommends that only water is used, so use a damp dog if you have one. If not, a cloth might also work. Loading the film is simple. Take the film out of the packet and slide it into the camera. When you close the uh, camera door, the camera will wear into life and eject the blank protective film card. Unfortunately, I can't show you any of this because I can't afford a film to waste. And I didn't have the foresight to film myself when using it. The viewfinder's camera is rather small, but it is bright, so it's adequate for the purposes of framing. Taking photos is simple, frame, and then press this rather big button here. The camera will wear into life and spit out the photo. 
Now time is of the essence here and light is your biggest enemy. The impossible film is really, really sensitive to light. It is recommended that you use a sun shield to protect your image. You can attach the protective film card to the camera with some tape. Impossible film also sell a frog tongue that unrolls when you take a picture to cover the image. Now, after taking a picture, place the photo into your pocket or somewhere dark to develop. No shaking is required. The impossible film that I was using was version three color. Development time will vary based on temperature, but can take between 20 to 30 minutes. I left mine for about an hour to do its stuff. The black and white impossible film develops a lot quicker, between five and 10 minutes. The other features on the camera is exposure compensation. Impossible film recommend that in bright conditions that this is set to a third in the dark. To be honest, I didn't play around with this too much. Shutter speed on the camera will vary between one second to 150th of a second, depending on the available light. There is something magical when you take a picture. You hear this beautiful whirring noise and the image comes out of the camera quite quickly. The rush to get it out of the light into your pocket to develop the anticipation of waiting for that image and showing it to your friends and loved ones. Only an instant camera gives you that magic feeling an impossible film has to be commended for keeping this magic very much alive. If I look at these images, they're not sharp at all. They lack detail, the color is washed out with a strong blue tone. Is it the camera? Is it the film? Is it me or a combination of all three? Well, I think it's a combination of all of them, to be honest. The film still has some way to go and only having eight shots for the film isn't enough for me to judge the result. The optics on this certainly have not been designed either to win any awards, but to deliver a camera at a price point for the consumer market. Would I shoot differently if I had some more film? Yes, I would. I'd use bright colors. I'd limit the backgrounds to be quite shallow rather than distance, trying to bring out the color in the film. The backgrounds of my pictures tended to be green and bland and simply not engaging enough. My problem was one of over excitement. I was so eager to use the camera that I didn't think about the shots that I wanted. It was like opening an expensive bottle of wine and then proceeding to pour it down the drain. Hindsight is always a wonderful thing, but part of photography and life is about making mistakes and then hopefully learning from them. Would I shoot another film with this camera? Well, I'm not sure to be honest. I don't like to feel defeated by a camera, but there are probably better Polaroid cameras out there. Can you get good results out of this camera? Well, yes, you can, but it will take an investment in time and money. Would I shoot Polaroid camera again? Of course, I think they're terrific, but now I want something better with more manual control. If you're looking for an instant camera to take pictures of your friends or family, or perhaps something to use at a party that'll give you reliable results, then I personally look past nostalgia and buy one of the Fuji instant cameras Film is readily available and is a lot more forgiving. The photos will also look like something you're probably more familiar with. However, to me, that all feels a little bit safe and predictable. If you're looking for a better quality Polaroid camera with some manual controls, such as ability to focus, select aperture, shutter speed, then this Polaroid certainly isn't for you. I'd personally skip it. It's really not for everyone, but if you want something different, something quirky, something that will give you results you might not expect or possibly even want, you can live with all its eccentricity and you don't mind that it's just a point and shoot. And provided you don't pay a lot, then this at a stretch would be my camera of choice. Thanks as always for watching this episode of Shutter Jam. Do you shoot with a Polaroid camera? What's your favorite Polaroid and how do you ensure you get the best results out of the film? Normally we would wrap up about now and I would tell you to subscribe and all the other things people tell you to grow their channels. However, after the ninth time, I'd start to sound like a broken record. Please do all these things, of course. But if you have a Polaroid camera sitting neglected in a box in the attic basement garage, then perhaps now is the time to dust it off and feel that magic that only an instant camera can provide.